their lives are the stuff of legend. Good evening. When the call came that September morning, their unflinching acts of courage redefined hero for our time. They are the elite firefighters of New York City's Rescue One, the best of the bravest. From here at the station house, it's about three miles to Ground Zero, where they fought in the first battle in the war against terrorism. But then the men of this unit and others like them put their lives on the line every day. Tonight, you will see why the men of Rescue One were heroes long before September 11th. Consider it a tribute to all who rush in, where most fear to tread. Bill Lagatuda begins now with a company of heroes, always ready to roll. You are watching a little bit of history caught on tape. The New York Fire Department's Elite Rescue One Unit. Just got a report of a confirmed pin job. A person pinned in a car. And we're going to go over there and see what we got. Specialists in everything from welding to scuba diving. They're called in to fight the unusual fires. This is the only call? Stretch it here? Free trapped firefighters and save lives. You still with me, my man? Yeah. How you feeling? Did you hit your head, Winston? You don't remember? Here they are, in action, you guys ready? in August. He'll be all right, though. He's gonna go take him to the hospital and check him out. Just a month before the World Trade Center attacks. Real one, Charlie. Just a month before nearly half the men you're watching now would lose their lives. Since September 11th, America has looked at firefighters, especially New York City firefighters, with awe. To most of us, their actions that day seem almost superhuman. But to hear the guys of Rescue One tell it, while they're grateful for the recognition, we may be missing the point. What's it like when people come up to you and say, you're heroes? One of the things about firefighters, and these firefighters, all 343 of them, is they're not heroes because they died. They're heroes because of what they do every day. And so tonight, with the help of some remarkable videotape, we'd like to introduce you to the heroes of Rescue One, before they were hailed as heroes. Wall Street for a fire in a commercial high-rise building. The video, this video, was shot by a TV show called The Bravest, one week last summer. Tell them to pull everything across the pot. Almost a hundred hours of tape, capturing everyday acts of courage by the 26 extraordinary men of Rescue One. Rescue One, come here, Paul. Fire in the uh, original wiring is extinguished. A lot of heroic deeds are done here, a lot of stuff that's never said are done here, and uh, more heroic than anything you can imagine. Over the course of that week, we're headed into Queens for a manhole explosion. Rescue One fought fires underground. Pride people from high-rise elevators. It looked like the cables actually snapped and they fell. They actually fell four floors. Hello, could you open the door? No? Okay, we'll get you out. Come on up, folks. One at a time. No And pulled them from burning buildings. In the front of the building, you got people on the fire escape on the fifth and sixth floor, it looks like. On this night, Thank you very much. at this fire, Thanks. there is no question Rescue One saved lives. I was glad that they got here as fast as they did. It was amazing. I was the occupant of the fire apartment, and he uh, appears to have jumped because he couldn't get out of the apartment from the fire, so he has some severe leg injuries and some burns. <laughs> and that's just the beginning. Hi. According to some uh, witnesses, the car is definitely in the air. Later, we'll show you some truly incredible rescues. 
But first, there is something else in that 100 hours of tape. Sometimes it's a lot of fun being able to drive something this big, like through traffic, like a sports car. Something every bit as important as the firefighting. It's a pretty elite group of guys. It's the firefighters, the men of Rescue One. We're all tight, we all hang together. We train, we drill, we love it. We want more of it. Some who survived the collapse of the World Trade Center, some who did not. 40 years, the job has changed, but the men are uh, basically the same. They've always been tough, they've been tough back then, and it's still tough. On those tapes is Joe Angelini, the single oldest fireman in all of New York City. I tell you what, they're all good memories. At 63, Joe was facing retirement, grudgingly. So he says, ah, yeah, I got two more years and they're probably gonna make me go. So I said, Joe, if there wasn't an, a cap on the age, how long would you do? He goes, ah, Tony, I'd like to do 50 years. 50 years in the fire department. I'm gonna be happy to live 50 years. My buddy. Then there's Dan Duddy. <laughs> Real clam sauce. Who knew almost as much about linguine with clams. Good clams, fresh basil. Good garlic. As he did about firefighting. It's called a wizard saw. Cuts through metal. <laughs> uh, without my glasses, I could use a little help here. Yeah, help me out, Dan. See what that says. Senior man, please give this to Todd Smith. He forgot to take it when he left. Nope. There's also the wide-eyed new guy. <laughs> new kid, really. My shaming kid. Todd Smith. <laughs> I look young. They say I don't shave. Before you join Rescue One, do you look up to these guys? I was very intimidated coming, and I came here to learn something new every day, and I learn something new every day. Every minute of the day is more like it. I'm born for firefighters. I'm a legend. And there's Dave Weiss. Bold guy with a big mustache and a bunch of tattoos. Who may have loved the job more than any of them. You're CFRD today? That means you're a medic. Gotcha. You're a rescue medic. You lay here where you're going to do all the work, OK? You're unconscious. That's our drill. Let's set it up. Very intense, boisterous. Beauty. Don't be nervous. <laughs> you know what? Roll him completely over. Don't let him go. You can't beat the action in Manhattan. That was a rush. <laughs> Emergency work, the fires, the buildings, it's just you don't find us anywhere in the world. And in charge of them all is Captain Terry Hatton. Pick up. Up you go. M4. Very nice. Let's find a gas. Okay, M4. Tell me about Captain Hatton. The master. The man had a computer chip in his head. Captain, in my eyes, is larger than life. I, I love working for the man. Every place in Manhattan was a challenge, especially uh, downtown. At 41, he was the department's rising star. He rose to the occasion. If there was anybody ever uh, born to be the captain of Rescue One, it was him. Son of a deputy fire chief. I dragged him into a firehouse uh, when he was young. I think I gave him a medal a week. And personal friend of New York Mayor Rudolph Giuliani. He was able to look fear in the face and just walk right through it. Connections like that could have propelled Hatton all the way to the chief's office himself. The expression I would use is he booted the chief's test. He took it uh, to uh, please me, but he really only wanted to be the captain of Rescue One for the next 10 years. But like all the men of Rescue One, Hatton just wanted to be in the thick of things. And here we are, the last line of defense in the world's greatest city. It's a tremendous responsibility, but it's the challenge of it. Well, if it's a challenge you want, try this. A woman trapped in a car at night underwater. We heard the tires spinning in the dirt. You can see the It's another Rescue One emergency captured on video, and it's next on 48 Hours.